joined by Sean Byrne. How are you doing, mate? Good, thank you. How are you? Aye, very good. Thanks for coming on. Just want to go back to the start, what your early football memories would be. Um, started off for me at um, my local local club, Kenway. Um, played for probably three, four year old. Started there. Um, I think it was with my cousin. Um, both started and uh, yeah, just played football for I was a wee boy. And just to say, okay, um, boys club and then getting picked up by Celtic then? Yeah, it was um, just through the played through the, the years at Kenway and then um, there was a few scouts that came to the games, Rangers and Celtic and stuff and then uh, I joined Celtic at I think it was nine or something like that. And what was that like going there, shock to the system with the facilities and stuff? <laughs> it was a big shock to be honest, um, quite daunting when you're that age going through to, to Celtic, um, obviously a massive club so um, that was a big change but it was an eye opener to see sort of the quality of the other people your age. Would you recommend going to pro youth at that age? Um, I think it's different for everybody. I think some kids probably better playing with their mates and enjoying football and stuff like that. But for me, I learned I learned a lot. Um, went to some amazing places. I went to like Belgium, France. Um, went to Qatar and stuff like that. Played against like some of the best the best clubs in the world. So it was a great learning curve. I. And uh, would there be any boys that would maybe know that were at Celtic through your teams? Yeah, um, I played Dylan McGeoch. He's at Aberdeen now, obviously. Was really good back then. One of the best players, Callum McGregor. Um, he's captain of Celtic now, so uh, you know that was probably the two two main players that are still still going strong. What was Callum McGregor like at that age? Yeah, he was always always quality. To be honest, um, you could see straight away that he was that he was going to like have a really good career in football. So you know, he's doing amazing just now. It was four years at Celtic, is that right? Yeah, uh, I think it was four or five years. I um, no, as I said, it was it was really good. It was. A big commitment, obviously, like going through there after school, I was getting home late at night and stuff like that, but um, no, nah, I'm, I'm really glad that i done it. And how did it come about that you were leaving Celtic? Um, I got to that age, I think I was 14, um, just with the distance, I wasn't getting to training as much as what the other kids and stuff were, and then probably when you're at Celtic, um, you're, you're not going to really get much of a chance, so I thought like for long term, um, Dunfermline was was a good was a good chance for me to go there and obviously develop and try and get breaking into the first team. And how did that move to Dunfermline come about? Um, it was from a scout called Jim McArthur. Um, he was at Dunfermline at the time. Had a few mates playing for Dunfermline and I think he had phoned phoned me and was just asking if I was interested. And then obviously phoned Celtic and I think they sorted something out that I was able to able to leave and go to Dunfermline. Did you feel as if there was a better, or probably a clearer pathway to the first team as well? Aye, hundred percent. I think like at Celtic they can bring in the best youth players all over the world. So um, at Dunfermline, I felt there was a good chance for me to go there, and obviously be playing all the time. Um, played with like coached with some like really good coaches, David Bingham, Ian Fergus, Gordon Jury was there as well. So I learned a lot for them. You end up being. Um captain at some of the youth sides eh? Yeah, um, yeah, we got to the Youth Cup final at Dunfermline, ended up getting beat, I think it was 2-1 by Celtic in the final, but um, no, that was really good, that was as the club was going through administration as well, so that was like a shining light, like a bad time sort of thing. And uh, make your debut against Montrose? Aye, um, I think we were up 3-0, so it was probably just a good chance to, to get me on and get some minutes but uh, no that was under Jim Jeffries I think it was I so no really thankful for him to give me the chance. When did you know that you were going to go on? Did you um, go before it or? No I just think as the game was going on I think we're up 3-0 and 2-0 maybe 2 or 3-0 and you just sort of get an idea that this could be a good a good time for me to come on and, and make my debut so now I was obviously buzzing. And just on Jim Jeffries he's a big character what was he like? Uh, generally unbelievable he obviously gave me my contract done firm one um brilliant i think he, uh, you hear you hear stories about him that he's like intimidating and um but to, the way he was with like with me was brilliant like he knew when to take me out the team he knew when to give me praise he knew when to give me a kick up the backside and stuff like that as well so he was he i learned so much of him with he was with um john potter who's probably one of the biggest influences that i've that I've had in football, um, and Neil McCann was unbelievable as well. He used to come in and, and help a lot with the training and games as well. Your first start against Ray, Aye. New Year's Derby, it's not a bad way to 
Uh, start, no, eh? I remember that was that was probably one of the best days that I've had sort of so far in my career. Um, I think I found out the day before that I was starting, um, so never got much sleep the night before. But uh, what like bigger game can you get than a than a Fife Derby for a, your first start and we end up winning one now as well? But no, that was that was a really special day to be honest. Must be a proud moment for you that. No, hundred percent it was. Um, I think the club were flying at that point as well. I think we, after that game, I'm sure we were up the top of the league and stuff like that, and there was a, a right good chance of, of getting promoted. So um, to break into the team, there was a lot of good players in that in that team. So no, that was a really proud moment. And first goal against our broth. Uh, oh no, I think I missed Remember about it. three sitters before that, and the one that I scored, I think I scuffed into the ground and ended up rolling over the line. But uh, I, I wasn't to get a goal. Um, then I usually score that much, so it was that was a good feeling, I. And then um, a bit of a tough time for you, administration and relegated in 2013. Aye, no, that was that was one of the hardest hardest moments of like my career so far was was going through that. Um, seeing some of like the older players losing their jobs, um, ended up we just got all got put in like a, a big room and they were just shouting names, and obviously you wouldn't see them after that. That that was them getting told that they were. That they were away for the club, so no, that was a, a really hard time. No getting paid, obviously, at that time, we were on hardly any money at all. So, kind of relying on like your parents and and stuff like that to help you to get to training and stuff. So, uh, no, that was that was a horrible experience. But um, thankfully, the club are they're fine now. See, as a young player as well, do you think you realise the seriousness of that situation, or do you think you're just kind of going day to day as if you're just pro football and that's it? Um, for for me, I, it was. It was probably not as bad because I was still obviously staying staying with my gran. Um, but like there were senior players like Joe Cardo, Andy Kirk, Andy Barman, Andy Dilley. Like these guys have all got mortgages and stuff like that, so they're probably think when their next pay's coming. So like as I say, we're known fortunes and money. So it was that was a, a big eye opener for me. And even then, uh, there was still players like Jordan McMillan who was offering to like give the young boys money so they can get into training and stuff like that. He was. Remember one day he came up to me and he's like, "If you're struggling, like, let me know and I'll help you out to get to training and stuff like that." So it was, I think it was just a point where everybody just come together and try to help each other out. That's brilliant, that, but it's also quite sad considering Aye. the situation, eh? No, because obviously that year I think we were right. I'm sure after New Year we were up at the top of the league with Partick, um, and then end up getting relegated that season because the club got a. a 15 or 20 point deduction so just shows you you could be up there and then next thing you know um, you're relegated I think we got beat by Alwa in the playoff yeah, finals I think it was. was so no it was horrible that year as well Do you think going down to League 1 helped your development long term? Um, possibly aye but I felt like at that time I was I was in a good place even before we went into administration I had broken into that team with, with a lot of like, quality midfielders that were there so it was good um, but I probably in the long term maybe that gave me a chance to get more games and after that I, think I played 30 odd games a season so it was it was really good to be playing football at a young age and then that first season I think it was first season you ended up losing the playoff final to Cowden Beef that was a, a real sickener I remember um, I remember yeah I think we beat Forfar in the the semi-final and really confident going into the final against Cowden Beef and Remember at a packed East End, it was the place was rocking, and they just turned up, and I think they destroyed us that day. To be fair, I think it was Greg Stewart and Kane Hemmings, Kane Hemmings were phenomenal that day. They just tore us to shreds, to be honest. So that was that was a sickener, right? Club size of Dunfermline should never be in League One, a, especially for the time, the few seasons that we're, at, that we're actually there. No, it's it is, it's hard to get out of these leagues as well, though. See when you go down. Um, to their leagues, it's, it is tough to get out because every week it's the other team's cup final, so um, they're always right up for it. So you've got to sort of match that every week. And when Alan Johnson was appointed, did you think that right, that's the time that we go up? Did you feel as if there was something different around the place? Um, yeah, but the the year before, I think I think we actually finished like sixth in the league. Um, it was an absolute disaster. Just near enough the same players as well, um, but. I think he just gave us, I don't know, it was just a fresh start for everybody at the club. Um, came in, I think we started the season flying. Um, I think we got quite a good lead. I think we were up with air at the top of the league and 
by the end we, we finished well clear um, but no I think it was just a fresh start for everybody and to be fair we romped that league that year no, obviously got promotion what how did it come about that you were going to be leaving Dunfermline um, so up until probably I don't know I think January, February I, think I played near enough every game um, I was in the middle with either Josh Falkenham or Andy Gagan and then probably around about February the warning signs just kind of started coming out the team a bit um, I don't know I just kind of stalled I would say more um, wasn't playing much wasn't really enjoying it as much as what I should have been um, and then it came to the end of the year and Alan Johnson he was just he was undecided he was like I don't know um, kind of I think he was just maybe waiting to see what else he can do and then I think I just came to the decision I think I needed a fresh start and best thing for me was to go and look elsewhere um, I think when you get you're at a club for so long as well you just sort of you get too comfortable and stuff so I think it was good for me to go and get a change of scenery and obviously go and try and kick on elsewhere Was it a tough decision for you to make like you say considering the amount of time that you were there for? No it was I remember the last game against Peterhead it was quite sad knowing because before that I knew that, that that was me finished at Dunfermline so I think I came on for the last half an hour and it was quite sad knowing that you wouldn't be coming back because that's what I was used to was being at Dunfermline um, so no it was sad but in the long haul it's worked out well for me So then how did the move to Livingston come about? Um, that was actually it was through Jim McArthur again he was um, the skip at, at Livingston this time so I'd met with Davey and uh, Hoppe but they were actually they were in the playoffs so uh, I think they were playing Stranraer so nothing really got agreed at that time they were just focusing on the the playoffs and then once that got done I think things got happened quite quick and I went in uh, the stadium and, and met both of them and I was really excited to start there. Did you ever have any second thoughts when Livy were relegated? Um nah because I, I knew it was I knew I needed a fresh start and it was I needed to go and basically go and prove myself again and get that fire back my belly that I that I needed. So um no that was a it was good. It was a good fresh start for me and it worked out amazing at Living, to be honest. And do you think the fact that you had a, like, a few seasons experience in League One helped you to go and win it again? Uh, it was good because I think even after the Livy got relegated, I think there was quite a lot of fears that the club would, would go part time. So uh -huh. um, for us to stay full time, and then it was obviously it was a new team as well. So Davy and Hoppy got other players that they wanted um, into the team. So no, it was, we ended up building a really, really, really good team. So then when you win League One, which Livy weren't expected to do at the time, what was the ambition with back in the Championship just to stay up? Um, aye, I remember we, ha we romped League One, I think we won it with a lot, of, a lot of points, but the next season we kept most of the same players, we had a good core again. Um, aye, we, it, our aim was to stay up, but inside that changing room we knew that we had quality, that we could, we could maybe do something special. And David Hopkins and David Martindale, what were they like together? Um, mental, to be honest. Uh, two of them were, I don't know, I think sometimes they, they had a competition to see who could shout the loudest and stuff like that, but nah, the two of them were, they were brilliant for me. Um, they sort of changed my, got me back playing, got me back enjoying football, sort of taught me another side of the game that I never used to really be good at, it was the dirty side of the game. And that, um, when I was at Dunfermline, I was more on the ball and stuff like that, and I had to kind of toughen up when I went to Livingston, and that's what I kind of needed, and they two were brilliant with that, so, no, they gave me the confidence to, to go and play and express myself. You got any stories about Davey Martindale? Uh, Davey, just crazy, just nice, really good for me, um, try to think of anything. Um, Hoppy used to tell us some mad stories before the game, he used to go back to when he played and I remember he came in with his old Morton strip one time honestly it was like a 10 kilogram dumbbell it was I don't know how he was running about in that um, he used to do some mad stories that just relax everybody before the game um, went and just some stories that you probably can't repeat to be honest but no he was he used to the two of them bounced off each other were really good to be honest I've heard a lot of people talking about like David Hopkins team talks is there any that stand out for you aye that's what I mean just would be like sitting in the chain room at half one waiting to get the team talk for the the game obviously focusing for the game and he'd come in and he'd just tell like some crazy stories um, there was one where he went down to Chelsea on trial with Derek McInnes 
Um, and he said Derek McInnes was like slick back hair, like looking a million dollars, where Hoppy was the ginger hair, no teeth and stuff like that. Um, I think they went down and he, his mum had packed him a bag with sandwiches in them, o opened them in the, the Chelsea chain room and everybody was, I think it was like onions and tuna <laughs> and all that and I think all the boys were disgusted there. Um, but he used to just, that's just the way he was, he was just, he didn't care, he was brilliant. Just, yeah, that just kind of relaxed boys before games. Aye, it did. I think, even like, I think he'd done it in the playoff semi-finals and finals and stuff like that and honestly everybody was just, before, like an hour before the game we were rolling about the chain room laughing but as I said it got us all close together and then we knew when we went out to the match that we'd all be fighting for each other and at what point did you start to kind of think we can get the playoffs um, probably after Christmas um, I think we were up around I think at one point we were second we went one up against St Mirren which could have put us top of the league Um I think we just started getting belief. The longer the season went, beat Dundee United, beat St Mirren, um, all the bigger teams in the league would, would give them a good game. So the season went on. I think we signed Ryan Hardy and Lee Miller. January and they two were massive for us. So I think they two added to what we already had in the team. And um, no, I think the longer the season went, I think boys started really believing that we could we could really go and do something. And getting those two strikers in probably helped us kind of keep up there and keep in the mix eh? Aye, no, 100%. Even, to be fair, the full, like, near enough the full season we were up in the playoffs, second place. Um, and then obviously adding, adding Hardy and Big Lee was massive. Just um, complimented each other so well. Yeah, they well. did and Lee was just brilliant with like for the change room as well. He was a top person so um, no, they, they two definitely helped us massively. So then it gets to the, it get, gets to the playoffs and uh, first game against Partick. Sorry, against Dundee United. Dundee United, I know, that game is... That's probably one of my favourite games, I would say, since I've started playing football. I remember we started, like, first minute, Rafa went through and scored, and you're like, here we go, and then after that, Dundee United pinned us back for a good 60 minutes. We, were, we looked a bit like we were hanging on, and then just the fitness of the team, just, I don't know, we just stuck the gear like we'd done all season, and then next thing, we ended up 3-2 up after... Crazy ten minutes spell really. When you were when you were two one down in that game, um I think the mindset with the fans was probably we're two one down but we know we can beat them at home. Was aye. that the mindset on the park or um I probably we wouldn't have been happy with a two one defeat aye. but when we you'd know that we're still in a game because our home form was really really good that year so we knew if we could keep it sort of to two one we were still still in the in the game. That's what they said before the game, Hoppy and Davy, make sure that we're we're still in the game when we go back to to Levy, so to get that sort of that win was unbelievable. And then really confident when we went back to to home that we wouldn't that we wouldn't get beat off them. The scenes when that third goal went in was just unbelievable. Eh? I know it was mental. Even the full playoffs, the atmosphere was amazing. I remember like the the games at home, like the full the main stand was full, but then they were opening the gates behind the goals and stuff like that as well. So no, I just wish it was like that sort of every game it would have been amazing I'm all just saying this because you're here but I think um, the Pittman goal in the playoffs I think it kind of you pressing the boy it kind of epitomised everything that that Levy team was about Aye that's how we were sort of just a proper team there was no like big egos or he's the main man or that it was just 16, 17, 18 boys just fighting like mad for each other um, and it worked and no that was that was a, a great moment I just you just know when you're pressing somebody that somebody else is behind you so even though it was good and at what point did you start thinking we could actually do this year um, when Neil Alexander saved that penalty in that the second leg um, I don't know I think we went in the final and like everybody was saying like this is a step too far um, Partick had a lot of good players and stuff like that um, but they went one 0 up, and I thought maybe this, maybe it is, maybe it is a step too far. But we started the game really well too. I remember being on the front foot, and they kind of sucker punched us with that goal. And then again, just never die attitude. We just didn't know when we were beat. Um, Keegs scored, and Keegs only scored against Partick that season. Dead, to be honest, dead. every goal. Um, and then Josh whipped in a great ball for wee pits, and two one. You're like, we're like ninety minutes away here for. 
for doing something really special. And what was it like when you went out at Fur Hill? What was what was the mindset like then? Um, keep it tight first. That's what our main thing was. Keep it tight first twenty minutes, like quieting the Partick fans, and we done that quite easy to be honest. We they never really had. A couple, of, I think maybe Spittle had a shot past the post. Um, but no, we were really comfortable that day. To be honest, I remember. I remember, we were comfy and got to half time. We're like, we've got a right good chance here. What were the celebrations like at full time there? That was one of the best nights of my life. I think we had our playoff, uh, our play of the season that night. Sorry, after the game. So like, there's no a better time to take your player of the year and then wind up in Edinburgh. And that was just wild that night as well. And then starting to prep for the Premiership, were you looking forward to your first first spell in the Prem? Aye, I was. That was just um, that was the full summer. You were just thinking about getting back and sort of getting ready for for the new season. And you seen the fixture list. Like, what harder game can you get than Celtic away, or Brendan Rodgers' team? So that's when you sort of knew it was it was real here that we were that we're going into the, the big league with the with the best teams. I think that kind of felt it was if it was meant to be though, like a welcome back type. Aye, of, no, it was. Players would have thought that as well, but no, it was. I think that. that's like David and that did say that. I remember like, can this is this is it now? Like last the last season, we were away to no disrespect to like breaking and stuff like that, where there's like three hundred fans, and then next thing you're going to a a sold, uh, a sold out Parkhead. So no, it was special that day. What was that like walking out there? That was mental, just um, 60,000 fans, it was flag day for them as well, so um, now that's when you did realise that like, we are here, we're, we're in the, the big time again, so um, no, it was it was good, we got a bit of run around like, but it was it was worth it. And uh, first Premiership goal against Hibs? Um, I remember that was one of my favourite goals I think I've scored, the um, ball just got played in the box, came out to the edge and I think I just chopped a few boys' ankles so up, like, but uh, taking the piss out of them there. Aye, that was that was a good goal to be honest, like. And then um, you end up first first prime goal against Hibs, and then Hearts five 0 <laughs> Aye, that night was again um, we had our Christmas night out the 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 day after that game, so like couldn't have went any better. Usually, like Christmas night suit you are. If you get beat, you're like, oh no, I think they're going to cancel it and stuff like that. But uh, no, we, we were unbelievable that night. Every time we went forward, it could have been more looked like we've got to score. And like, even when the second half, like we're just like, and we're all celebrating. What's happening here? Like we just couldn't believe what was what was going on. So now that was that was a great night. Five goals in under twenty minutes. Eh? Uh, it was. It was just even in the first half, we were all over them as well. And you were thinking, oh, no, it's got to be one of these nights they're going to nick someone here and end up winning. But we just every time went forward in that second half, we looked like we've got to score. So there's a wee chop for your goal there as well. Aye, eh? uh, no, I think that's the only thing I can do to be honest. So uh, <laughs> no, nah, that was good. And uh, when Livingston were promoted, Kenny Miller gets the job. What was he like to work under for the short time that he was there? Uh, unbelievable. Honestly, he's like his ideas about football and that were were unbelievable. And I think everybody at, at the club like Roy and did enjoy working under him, but. Um, it was he was trying to play a different style to what we'd been used to, like sort of we hoppy we were, I wouldn't say we we're a long ball team but we we did get the ball forward a lot quicker. Where he wanted to play sort of possession based, working for the back and I don't know what happened in the background but obviously it just it never worked out and um he left quite sharp and I think I remember like everybody was gutted and a bit shocked to be honest when he when he did leave. And what was his training like every day? And honestly, it was high tempo, like loads of good like possessions and stuff like that that we done. Um, his detail and that was really good as well. He, like he, I, I knew what he wanted for me when I when I played, and I was got to think I was got to be quite a big party the way he wanted to play. So it was it was good. And what was it like for you personally working under a big name in Scottish football like Kenny? I it was it was good because obviously he signed as a sort of player manager as well. But um, I don't know. I just. I don't know if maybe David it wasn't working in terms of like doing both roles so um it was good to obviously learn off him as well. So then Kerry Miller leaves and uh, Gary Holt comes in. Do you think that was kinda going back to what it was like under Holt? Aye, no, I'd say we'd like stripped it back to back to the basics sort of and 
sort of back to what everybody at the club knew and um, again he was another really good coach and obviously done well at Livingston the next year as well when he when he stayed um, but he was he had good ideas and had played at a, a good level as well it's always good to like hear fresh ideas and that as well so um, nah Polty was really good as well What style do you think suited you more the one that Hopkin and Holt had or the one that Miller was trying to do Um it's hard to say because I think like the way Hoppy played was successful in terms of like getting the ball forward and midfield picking up second balls and stuff like that. But I feel comfortable in the ball and that as well. So I do. I like I like doing a bit of both to be honest. So just I was quite happy to adapt to to however each like manager wanted to play. And what did Holt do for you in the long run? Um, well, I, I played I played nearly all the games until. Obviously, I got sent off against Dundee, and um, so he gave me the chance to to play along with Davey as well. He he picked me most weeks to to go and play, so obviously just gave me the chance to play and and keep improving. Did that happen? Um, basically, I had a year a year left. Um, Davey had spoke to my agent about extending my contract around about October time. Um, it just got complicated between Davey and my agent to be honest they didn't really get on um, I kind of got the the brunt of the, the, the two of them sort of you know, getting on well and communicating and that so um, got to probably I think I ended up getting sent off against Dundee um, maybe Febu February time I think it was um, and then after that I think just things just went a bit stale between then to the end of the season I was used to playing sort of every game at Livingston and then it was quite hard just sitting on the bench sort of the last few months. Um, so I knew sort of probably before the end of that season that there probably wasn't going to be any way back and I was going to have to look for someone new. And how would you look back on your time at Livingston? Uh, amazing. Like They probably gave me my like a chance in football again to get back and join it and Gave my platform to go and go and play every week and express myself and stuff like that. So now I'm like so grateful for Davy and Hoppy, Kenny Miller, Gary Holt and stuff like that for for uh, giving me the chance at Livingston. Really, and like you said, you, well, you were flying for the few seasons you were at Livy. Aye. Was there any other interest out with Dundee? Aye, I was probably quite close to signing with Motherwell that year. Um, there was other like interest and stuff like that, but. There was nothing concrete, I think St Johnson and St Merlin and stuff like that. Um, then I think when Hoppy was doing it, Bradford, there was like talks and stuff like that. But um, with Dundee, just the manager, like James McPate, just showed how much he wanted me there, and it was quite an easy decision, to be honest. Was that the biggest impact in joining Dundee? Um, aye, he, like, or Gaffer, just like, he just showed me straight away. I remember I was on holiday, phoned me, then. Um, I went and met him at the stadium. the The day, I, like the next day, I got back for holiday, and you could just tell straight away that that he really wanted me at the club, and he wanted me to be a big part of the club going forward. So no, it was an easy decision. And what's he like every day and training and that sort of thing? He's obviously quite a a young manager. But what's yeah, he like every um, day? So first year was probably a learning curve for everybody. I think we j we we did underperform. Um, were just inconsistent would be good like for a couple of games and then we'd go on a stupid run again like losing two three stupid games and then um no we just i think the championships are like, a really tough league i don't know like probably didn't realize how hard it is until you're you're in that league you could see like rangers hibs hearts and stuff, like they've all struggled in that league dundee united for a few seasons as well so the games are really tough um but i know it's it was tough that first season and then obviously when we got on a good run like the the Covid came and stuff like that so took the, the wind out of sails really You were sitting third when Covid hit uh, We had a good chance indeed. I think we were five or six games unbeaten and never conceded a goal in the, the, the games as well and then I think we were only a couple I think we played Dunfermline just before Covid came and I think if we'd beat them we would have went above them so it was it was like one of the ones where like it just happened at a disaster at a time for us. We were really picking up form and um, looking really good towards the end of the season. And what's, what would you say the biggest differences have been playing through COVID compared to just what would be a normal time? 
just the fans obviously that's that's the biggest thing like um being in like separated in the changing rooms like that um the subs would be in one changing room the starting living in the other um no showers after the games probably driving to the games on your own um obviously the fans is massive that's what we want to do we want to play in front of the big crowds and stuff like that and it was tough at times last year but um at the end it, it worked out obviously really well for us this season Dundee made some big signings well with the season you got promoted Aye. Charlie Adam for one of them what's he been like Aye, he's phenomenal to be honest um, I remember my first season Graham Dorn signed and you think Jesus like we've signed like, a class player here as well um, then the next year Charlie came and I'm like oh my god I think I'm going to be playing here hardly at all um, but he's honestly like left foot's scary like you just move and he'll find you whatever so um, nah, he's top class he's had an amazing career so it's been good to like learn off Dawes uh, and Charlie like, when they've been at Dundee Is he the one that sets the standard in training every day? Ah he is he's got like high standards everything he does um, you can just tell his quality like when we're training and stuff like that some of his strikes his passes his awareness and stuff like that it's just it's good for like me to learn I'm obviously a bit older but like some of the younger ones are like there's no better player to, to learn off than Charlie and Graham Dorns when the when he was here as well. So promotion through the playoffs, back in the playoffs again. Aye. Did you feel as if something similar was gonna happen? Aye. There was a even like last year, the first half of the season again, like inconsistent beat hearts, but then going away and dropping stupid points where we should have been winning. No hitting like the heights that we knew. We knew there was like a proper good team there but we just so inconsistent. Don't know, probably three months for the end of the season, just someone just switched. Like, we just kind of mind what game it was. I don't know, maybe an hour away. I think, like, we'd been beat during the week by air, and it was like a real low point for everybody at the club. And we're you're starting to doubt yourself and stuff. Um, but that hour game, I don't know, just someone just clicked. And towards the end of the year, we were flying. Like, we I think we went eight or eight games unbeaten. Um, put a lot of pressure on ourselves because we needed to win nearly every game to finish second I think Rayford second for the full season and then we ended up stealing second off them in the in the last game against Queen of the South and that second's a massive like it's a massive advantage I think going into the playoffs where Dunfermline played Rafe probably two tough games we were able to rest and be fresh going into the playoffs so I think it was a case of just the penny dropping and everybody coming together and saying listen we need to go up here we just found like a a settled sort of team formation but even like the boys that weren't playing there was just like a real togetherness for everybody like the coaches the players are just I don't know someone just changed and we just looked like a proper team um, and that was hard because obviously we weren't in the change room and stuff we just built like a really strong bond with each other and I did someone just changed and the last like, we were flying going into the playoffs we were like so confident that we could have beat anybody in there you were saying and when you got promoted with Levy how the atmosphere was in the playoffs how how big, how much of a big difference did that make at Dundee in the playoffs um, it's complete opposite aye complete opposite because played Rafe where that game would have been Dundee would have filled like, behind that goal Rafe would have had a good crowd but we just knew that we needed to, to get by Rafe and get into that into that final and give ourselves the best the best possible chance to, to get promoted but we got through and honestly like we were so confident we were just flying like for you personally when you uh, got promoted against Kelly do you think it was a case of relief for you being back in the Premiership or just buzzing to be back Um, I obviously buzzing to be back in the Premier League because that's where you want to be playing as a footballer Um, but I just that Kelly game I think just we were the better by far the better team both games um, like we just we look like the Premiership club to be honest. Um, first game, I think we we're two 0 up, but we could have been three or four up, and then they end up sucker punching like us at the end with a goal. But then the way we started that second, um, that second, that second leg was unbelievable. Um, and now we, we thoroughly deserved it. But no, it was again that's where Dundee should be is in that Premier League. So then um, back in the Premiership, what's your ambitions for this season? Uh, for us it's got to be to stay up, um, I think we need to 
try and get a bit of um, consistency in the, the Premier League um, for Dundee. I think it's been like sort of up and down, like fighting relegation, um, getting relegated obviously a few seasons ago. Um, so no, I think we need to like solidify our, our place in that Premier League and and um, and stay and stay there for a few years and start building and looking further up the table. We were speaking about it earlier. It's a really strong league this season. I uh, think like every game is going to be like really tough. We've got like the Derby back, um, Rangers Celtic, Hibs Hearts, Aberdeen, St Johnson. Every game's got to be tough and. You're going to have to scrap for every point, so no, that's that's where we want to be, and that's where Dundee should be, is in in the top league. And how buzzing are you for the Premiership? Um, to have the Dundee derby back, how much are you looking forward to playing? No, nah, that's Red? played in. I think it was two before, and on, like the atmosphere was electric in both games. So that's got to be a real buzz around like Dundee when these games come up. So I think it's good for the Premier League to have the derby back as well. So no, nah, it's, it's everybody's buzzing for the season ahead and obviously we've got the confidence for last year so looking forward to it. And Derby against St Johnston as well eh? <laughs> Aye, no that's, that's what I mean, St Johnston done well last year as well so there's going to be big crowds, hopefully all the fans are back in, um, every game's going to be huge, like every point's going to need to be uh, fought for really hard so now we're really looking forward to that. It's good to have a big club like Dundee back in the Premiership as well I think, like you said for the sake of Scottish football as well eh? No, it is, but there's an easy thing to say, like, Dundee deserved to be in the Premier League, but it was up to us, sort of, last year to, to go and do that. There was a lot of pressure on us, um, I think that was our second season in the Championship, so, no, we, we really did need to get back up, and obviously we've done it, so it was brilliant. Definitely. And just to finish off, going to go for a wee quick-fire question round, if that's all right with you, I mate. no worries. Right, so, favourite goal? Uh, favourite goal would be, I scored a half volley against Ayr. Edge of the box, top corner, I'll never do it again, so I probably that. Uh, favourite stadium you've played in? Uh, favourite stadium? Probably be Ibrox, I. Uh, best mate in football? Um, Ryan Williamson and Rafa De Vita. Your biggest achievement in football? Biggest achievement? Um, probably getting promoted both ways. Living in Dundee, that was two good, two obviously proud moments. Best player you've played against? Best player I've played against? Uh, Glenn Kamara. Uh, most embarrassing moment in football? Uh, don't know if embarrassing, but like probably when I got sent off against Dundee, just that feeling is just the worst in the world when you get sent off. Like You just feel like you've let everybody down, so uh, you go back to the chain room, you're just sitting there like. I think the world's going to end. Going for that then? Aye, uh, probably that, aye. Uh, and the best five-a-side five team of players you've played with and why? Uh, in goals, I'll go with Liam Kelly. Uh, he's unbelievable with his feet as well, so he could probably play as an outfielder. Um, who else have we got? Defence. I'll go... Probably Decky Gallagher. I'll probably get abused if I never picked him. And he always tells everybody he's the best player in the world, so uh, I'll go with him. Um, who else? I'd put Raf on my team. He's just a genius technically, left and right foot, so he'll score the goals. Um, who else? Charlie Adam probably have to be in there as well. Just unbelievable player. Um, yeah, how much is that? Four, last one. Striker. Striker. Um, I'll go with Danny Mullen. Just I've played with him at Livingston and Dundee, and he's nice nah, quality. To be fair. And biggest mourner you've played with? Biggest mourner. Uh, Paul McGowan by a country mile. Honestly, just non-stop, constant moans about anything. Uh, but in a good way as well. He, he moans because he wants the best out of everybody, but sometimes just shut up, man. That's brilliant, mate. Thanks nah, a lot no for worries, coming man. on. Thank nah, you. That's brilliant. Perfect.